everyone if you're new here it's bella welcome back to my channel today i kind of just wanted to share with you guys what i am reading for english class so i'm going into my second year of an english degree well i'm actually double majoring in english and anthropology but we're not going to talk about the anthropology here i'm taking three english classes this semester i'm taking british literature 2 which is a survey of literature from the 17th to the 20th century i have not taken british literature 1 yet i'm doing that next semester so Oops. I'm also taking intro to Canadian literature and then I am taking queer writing, which is a year long class with a huge, he obnoxiously huge list of books that we are going to be reading. I feel like nobody knows, including myself, like nobody knows what you actually do in an English degree, like what you actually read. I think the cool thing about like English degrees is that for the most part, like, yeah, I have to take British literature. I have to take Canadian literature. I have to take American literature. Like there's some things that you have to take for the courses, but you can really curate the degree to what you care about. Like I do not give a flying fuck about literature written before the 18th century. It's so boring to me. So like, I'm not gonna be taking a lot of classics classes, but I am gonna get the chance to take like graphic novel classes and gothic classes and fantasy and horror classes. I think for those of you who are interested in English degrees, like it's not just reading boring poems from the year like 700. This is still the second year stuff. So a lot of this is like pretty typical, but again, I get to take a year long queer writing class, all books about queer people in different facets throughout out the years and I thought that this would just be like a fun thing to share with you all so I hope you enjoy this let me know if you do and yeah let's just bring on the books so we're gonna start with my Canadian literature class obviously Canada's childhood darling if you lived in Canada you probably read this book Anne of Green Gables by L.M. Montgomery. This is the story of 11 year old Anne who is very imaginative and precocious and she shows up in Avonlea, Prince Edward Island only to discover that the family who adopted her actually wanted to adopt a boy. But it's the story of her like winning them over. I read this as a kid. I had the entire series. I'm so excited to revisit this from like a more analytical perspective. I think it's gonna be really fun and cute and like what a great way to start off this whole thing with like a children's book that is pretty universally beloved. The next one we're reading for that class is Michael Ondaatje's In the Skin of a Lion. Yes, I bought two of the exact same copy from two different used bookstores. <sighs> don't judge me. He's a Sri Lankan Canadian author. And this is a love story and a mystery about a man, Patrick Lewis, who shows up in Toronto in the 1920s and earns a living looking for a vanished millionaire and tunneling underneath Lake Ontario. Should be fun. The back says it is a haunting tale of passion, privilege, and biting physical labor. The last thing I am reading for Canadian literature, and these are only the novels, by the way, I'm not really gonna go into like the short stories or things like that, just cause this video will get way too long. We're just gonna talk about like the big like novels that I can show you. So the third one that I'm reading is a play. This is The Unnatural and Accidental Women by Mary Clements, who is a Métis playwright. This play is about the disappearance of multiple indigenous women from the downtown east side of Vancouver who all died with extremely high blood alcohol levels at the cause of one man. So that's gonna be a fucking bummer. But that is the last thing we're reading for Canadian literature. Okay, so next we'll talk about British literature too. Now I have <coughs> three anthologies of books. I'm not sure what we're going to be reading out of these yet. This is the only one I don't have my syllabus for. I know we're for sure reading The Rape of the Lock by Alexander Pope, like relatively early on into the class. That is a narrative satirical poem, basically shitting on 18th century high society. Should be a fun time. I looked through the contents and like we've got some Anne Radcliffe in here. So let's hope we get to read some of that because I loved Mysteries of Adolfo. We've also got like Emily Bronte, George Eliot, Oscar Wilde. So lots of like big names in these guys. The big novel, the big book that we are reading for this class is The Lovely Great Expectations by Charles Dickens. And I found like this really cute little collector's edition. 
I've actually never read this. This is about the orphan boy Pip who lives with his shitty older sister and is offered the chance to head to London by an unknown benefactor to become a gentleman. So Pip just abandons all of his friends, he heads off to London only for his <laughs> great expectations to be proven wrong time and time again, he winds up going home penniless. Now we're gonna talk about the absolutely obnoxious amount of books I'm reading for queer writing. Remember, this is a year long class, so like I'm not reading all of these books in a few months. Like I do have a whole year to read all of these. The first one we're gonna be reading is The Well of Loneliness by Radcliffe Hall. This was considered the most well-known lesbian novel in the English language for decades. And it follows Stephen, who is an upper class English woman who falls in love with a woman, but society's expectations and influences really affect their relationship. Oh, I should also add, all of these books are going to be absolute bummers. I don't think any of these are going to be fun to read. I think they're all going to make me sad but I, that's kind of the point, isn't it? The next one we're reading is The Children's Hour by Lillian Hellman. So this is a play set in an all girls boarding school run by two women. One of the students gets angry at something and runs away and to keep from being sent back, she tells her grandmother that the two headmistresses are having an affair, which proceeds to thoroughly destroy both of their lives. Woo. Then we have Look Down in Mercy by Walter Baxter. This was his first novel and after his second novel was released, he was arrested for basically talking about homosexuality. So this book is set during World War II following an officer in the British army who does have a wife at home, but he feels very emotionally distant from her. To deal with that, uh, he tries romancing a nurse, a female nurse, but eventually meets the male private Anson who he falls for. We're in the middle of World War II, right? So he has to deal with his internalized homophobia, the relationship that is totally unacceptable during this time and the actual war. So again, this is going to be really sad. <laughs> also war stuff really gets to me. So I presume this is gonna be a rough one. Next is one that's actually been on my list for quite a while, which is very exciting. And that is The Price of Salt or Carol by Patricia Highsmith. We're also gonna get to watch the movie with Rooney Mara and Kate Blanchett for this one. So like, I feel spoiled. This is based on a true story from Highsmith's life about Therese who was trapped in a department store day job when she meets Carol an alluring suburban housewife who is similarly trapped in her very boring marriage. So they fall in love and set out on a road trip across the United States, but they are pursued by a private investigator who forces Carol to choose between her daughter and her lover. Um, also, the movie was nominated for like seven Academy Awards and won a bunch of other ones. So it's really gonna be a good time. Not really a good time. You know what I mean. Then we have Midnight Cowboy by James Leo Herlihy. We also get to watch the film for this one. This is about Joe Buck, who's a Texan cowboy off to the Big Apple to seek his fortune when he meets Ratso Rizzo, the best name I've ever heard since Harrow Hark Nona Jessimus, who is a con man. The city is a lot harder than Joe expects. I believe he turns to sex work to survive and the relationship with Ratso does not help anything. Then we've got another play. This is The Boys in the Band by Matt Crowley. This revolves around a group of gay men who are all hanging out for a birthday party and get proceedingly more drunk and more mean as the night goes on. This was like the first commercially successful play to actually show gay life to mainstream America. We're gonna jump right into some graphic novels. We're reading both The Adventures of Jodell and Stonewall Mark by Guy Pilaert. So his style is like a 60s pop art style, which is really cool. And I could not find any information about Stonewall, but I could find what The Adventures of Joe Dell is about. It is a satirical spy adventure set in fantasy Rome, featuring both billboards and vampires. Like, I'm sorry, does that not sound like fun? And it's in this like really cute, I'll put a picture of it on the screen, like really cute, fun aesthetic. I think that's gonna be a really nice break from all of these sad, sad stories. <laughs> After we read that, we're gonna read Stone Butch Blues by Leslie Feinberg. This is about Jess Goldberg, who is a gender non-conforming butch lesbian and decides to start taking testosterone to pass as a man in order to survive when she is injured in a factory accident and left without work. This is a very heavy read about homophobia, transphobia, anti-Semitism, and a lot more during the 50s through the 70s. This has also been on my list for a minute. So I am excited to read it, even though it's gonna break my heart. 
After that, I'll be reading Zami, A New Spelling of My Name by Audre Lorde. This book started a new genre that Lorde called a biomythography, which is a piece that combines history, biography, and myth. And it's about her own life as a black queer woman, ranging from when she was a child up to her 20s, which is cool. I'm glad that we're not only looking at white stories here. After that, we'll be reading Oranges Are Not the Only Fruit by Jeanette Winterson. This is also a semi-autobiographical book. This is a coming of age story about Jeanette's experience coming out as a lesbian in a very religious family. Like so religious, her mom thinks she's God's chosen one religious. So I think that's going to be a journey. We'll also be reading Seven Miles a Second by David Wadjun... What? Oh god. This is a true autobiography, not a semi-autobiography, about the author's experience of prostitution in New York City, his homelessness and drug addiction, and how contracting AIDS basically turned him into a pariah super super cheerful we have another graphic novel after this skim mariko tamaki uh, skim by mariko tamaki this is set in the 90s in a girls school in toronto where skim aka kimberly starts an affair with her teacher ms i don't know why i wrote it that way obviously her teacher ms archer starts an affair with kimberly because kimberly is a child but during this time the entire school is mourning the suicide of one of their students okay then we have fun home by allison bechdel this is another graphic novel and this is a memoir she literally calls this a family tragic comic and if that isn't relatable like i don't know what is <laughs> This is about Allison, who in college comes out as a lesbian and discovers that her father was also gay. And just a few weeks after that, he commits suicide and she has some kind of mystery to unravel. We're coming to the last ones. We are going to be reading Brokeback Mountain and watching the film. This is by Annie Pruel. Prulks? I mean, I feel like we all kind of know the gist of this. This has been a pretty big pop culture reference for a long time. But this is about two ranch hands who come together when they are working in an isolated area over the summer and they fall in love. They eventually both marry women, have kids, but their relationship lasts throughout the story. And it's supposed to be really sad. <laughs> we then have Just Kids by Patti Smith. This is another memoir about two artists, Patti Smith and Robert Mapplethorpe, who is a photographer, who have a relationship and a promise to take care of each other as they reach for their artistic dreams. But it's set on the background of the 1969, like sexual politics and awareness kind of thing that was going on at that time. The last book I will be reading for queer writing and the last book we'll talk about in this video is Funny Boy by Shayam Salvadori. This is a coming of age novel about growing up gay in Sri Lanka in the years leading up to the 1983 riots. That's what I'm reading for this first semester of my English degree. Yeah, I'm gonna have to read some boring poems for British Lit, but most of these books all sound pretty good. Like I know I'm a little biased because I'm taking a queer writing class and that's obviously Obviously not a requirement, but I get to read Anne of Green Gables and analyze that for school. I'm just like thoroughly excited to start the school year. Today is actually technically my first day. <laughs> um, I'm filming this before I have to go. I just kind of wanted to share what I'm reading. As a second year English student, what you can kind of expect if you decide to go for an English degree, because it's not useless. And if you love literature this much, I mean, I'm willing to read fucking 20 books. If you love this kind of stuff, I don't want you to feel pushed away from it just because people assume assume that English degrees aren't worth anything. That's not true. English degrees are worth a lot. This is my little baby rant on why you should study what you want to study if you're going to spend a million dollars at school, like at least do what you want to do. Any degree is a degree. If you're taking classes this semester, like tell me what classes you're taking. Are you an English major? Are you in something else? I'd love to hear. I love hearing your guys' thoughts. Have a absolutely lovely rest of your day. Keep an eye out for my reaction to my booktube newbie tag. It's been almost a year of me being on YouTube. And that's crazy. So I'm, I'm doing a little reaction to that video to kind of celebrate and re-answer the questions a year later. I will see you all very soon. Bye!